Welcome to New Hope Celebrates History Artists and Authors Series. Today we are going to visit with three local artists, Kathy Begg, Donna Lillo, and Erin Simmons. Take a walk with me down Bridge Street to the boardwalk where their studios are located. A boardwalk in New Hope? Yep, located right behind New Hope Arts and across from the iconic New Hope Railroad. These three incredibly talented women have created an artist community with a sense of deep caring, cooperation, support, and friendship. Although each work with very different mediums, they are very much alike in their spirit, heart, and caring. Each adds to the New Hope history of being an artist colony, a tolerant and accepting community, and a town that supports others. Let's drop in on their morning coffee chat, learn about each artist, and visit the individual studios and galleries to learn about how they developed their careers and their wonderful camaraderie. I mean, I so like what brought you here? Well, what brought me to, to New Hope was I was a college student up in the, at, down in Trent, Trenton State. Right here. And uh, I took a Sunday drive and ended up in Lambertville. Okay. So, which is a cute little town back then. It had, it had you know, a sporting good shop, a haberdashery, bakeries, it had all that. And then I kind of walked across the bridge and said, wow, this is a really artsy place. I think I really love it here. Um, and then walked around to help, you know. And that was your first time ever? First time ever. Never even knew there was a new hope. And I walked down this one alley. I haven't found it since. <laughs> and I've been up here for 40 years. Had not found this place since then. And there was this older gentleman, who's probably passed by now, and he said, Young lady, when you get serious about your artwork, come see me. Really? Yeah. So, I got serious about my artwork and tried to find him, and I haven't found him yet. I moved to Lambertville, because uh, I found an apartment, and started trying to get involved in the art community, because I lived in Atlantic City before, <laughs> and I was really involved in the art community down there. But when you move to a new place, it's really hard to break into the arts, mm -hmm. you know, it's like, my first introduction to the arts in, I call New Hope and Lambertville sister cities, you know, because it's just really one place. Right. And um, they were doing the Shaft Fest, the first year of the Shaft Fest, and they were doing a poster contest. So I did a poster, and that was my first introduction to the arts in this area. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, so that's what brought me up here. And I ran into New Hope Arts. And Ricky and Paul, who had a sidetrack gallery, and um, they were doing a show called Naked and New Hope. And it was a night, it was going on, I think they did 12 years of it. And I just happened to have some sculptures. It just happened to be in my trunk of my car. And um, Ricky came out, saw my sculptures, and put them in the shell. And that was my first show in New Hope. And um, one of them sold my first show, and now it's in Australia. So I was like, huh? So I came up to said, let's see what's inside this building. So I walked upstairs, and it, Robin Lawson was the director. Right. And Christine was her assistant. Yep, that's who so started it. Christine happened to be sitting there. And I said, do you all do anything that has anything to do with wood? And um, Christine broke out in this huge laughter and that wonderful smile that she mm -hmm. has. And she says, well, we're starting to take applications for the, the wood show. I said, oh. And she must have thought I fell off, fell off the, you know, the wagon. So anyway, that's how I got to New Hope. And I've been here ever since. How about you, Don? How what got you here? I think what got me here when I was like, 15 and starting out, I came to New Hope cutting school one day, and I used to say to my friends, yeah. I want to be an artist and live in New Hope someday. Wow, that's and cool. I, and finally came to New Hope, I think at the age of 22, okay. lived in Lambertville the way you did, because Lambertville at that time you could yeah. afford it more. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And now I live in New Hope, we have our studios here work here. 
That's what brought me here, and the gay community brought me here too. Mm -hmm. Being gay, I mean, it, everybody is together, and there's <laughs> lots of stuff to do. That, that's what kept me in the middle. Yeah, yeah. That's what kept me here, because I was living in other places. So between the art and the gay community, I think yeah. that's what really yeah. brought it home for me. Yeah. What about you? Well, so I moved here about seven years ago from New York. Um, lived on a river town, basically, in New York, on the Hudson River, and came here seven years ago and was living closer, like right on the suburbs of Philly, and not happy because I missed, I missed uh, like history, I missed art, and I had all that back in New York. So the two things I need to kind of be happy are history and art. Mm -hmm. And when I was going, probably on a drive to New Hope, and saw like, oh, this reminds me so much of my home, that I was like, how do I become a part of this community? <laughs> um, at the same time, I'm a director of, you know, of Big Brothers Big Sisters, the program director, and all the art that I was making, I was putting in my, all the seconds. I was doing some craft fairs, but all the seconds I was putting into my, um, into my office, and my staff, which I don't know if this is a like, good thing or not, but then they come in and they're like, you're missing your calling. Um, so I was procrastinating one day writing a grant, and went on LoopNet, and saw this the space, studio. and I was like, are you kidding me that this is available? So I talked to my boss and I said, this is something I have to do. Um, talked to like probably the most practical people in my family, mm. and thought they would say, no, 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 it's not the right time zone. Um, but they said, you have to do this. So I came here, and I know, I've, got this, <clears throat> I've got a small shop, so you know it's manageable only over on the weekends. Right. My, my boss was totally behind me. She knew that I had to like follow my dream and still, you know, still work at um, So you do both. Sisters, so I do both. And I can't like imagine, I would literally drive up and down like York Road mm -hmm. and just be excited about all the different places that I would see. And there's there's literally no way that I want to be anywhere else. I've got the river, I've got the history. of us. I have you guys. <laughs> <laughs> I will say, like my first day. Right. I met Kathy and that hat, and I was like, yep, I'm in the right spot. Yeah. <laughs> I'm like, this is gonna be fun. Mm -hmm. And then um, when I met you guys, I was just like, you know, we are off the beaten path, right? So mm -hmm. we have to do a little bit extra work than yeah. we do mainstream. I must say that you, we have to give you credit for the social presence that she's brought to our studios. I love yes. setting things up. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> so yes. doing a lot of like, doing the graphic stuff and then and then you guys just agreeing to like, yeah, let's all do this yeah. together. Yeah. And then you could say that you could call this Canal Walk studio, like studios or whatever. Mm -hmm. So we went with that, right. and we were able to basically get the you know one Saturday a month. Right. And then we decided we were going to blow it out, and you would have a new art, a new artist. I right. would, I would do things. You would be open later, so people. And that's could see the you third do Saturday of every yep. month. Third, third Saturdays. Saturdays. So we yeah. call it third Saturday. We stay open till and eight thirty at night. It's really been a great event. Yeah. We, we have, have live, live music. music. Yeah. We've yeah. got the lights now. <laughs> yeah. bring people you up. have artist openings most third yeah. Saturdays. This past third Saturday, you had, had a book reading. Yeah, first yeah. reading. And I think the other thing that makes this place special is that we're all working studios. Yes. You know, it's not just that we hang work, we make work. We're in here. our studios working. Yes. Right. Yes. You can go and in the summertime, the we deck. work outside. Out on the deck or here. So it's a great place to visit, it's a great place to come, it's a great place to be. And we have a really good friendship between us all. So it's it's been one of, this is what we do. We sit and we talk for about an hour and then we say, Time to get to work, let's <laughs> yep. go, let's see you in a couple Time of hours. <laughs> I've been let here. the walls down. I've been here ten years. And I've been here thirteen. And you've been I've over been here in June of twenty twenty. Right so. there in the <laughs> pandemic. Yep. So anyway, I think what, what the friendship develops slowly over time. We were just doing our work. I was outside doing a lot of partying yeah. then. Um, getting each, to, like, getting feedback there. from each other on our, our artwork. artwork. Like, yeah. And if we sell something, we run over to the other person's studio. We're all high five. fiving yeah. each yeah. other yeah. all yeah. the time. All the just time. Make, and the energy that we give each other is just... Awesome. Very important. If we're yep. having a bad day, we kind of could say, hey, it's not a great day, but... Help you know, each other with pricing. Yeah. Now we, yeah. 
Our We're a good team. We are. We're a good team. We got, it's a good place. It's a wonderful place to work. I love coming to work every day. I do too. I do. I, I love it. I mean, because we're also giving, because we are, because we give to each other and things, we also give to the community. Yes. And I don't want to forget that because because um, you've done that special event where the kids painted the tiles yeah. Yeah. and then sold them and you donated the money to an organization. Hi. Yeah. Um, we, had, um, we had the two elementary schools, they made their art, and then we were able to give close to $400 to. Bucks County SBCA and 402 Pine to think. Yeah, so that was fun because we want to, you know, yeah. incorporate the community. And every year I donate time, space yeah. to some organization. There was one time the uh, Home Front had a gallery show here. And every year I do that and, and, and you help out with that yeah. and, and we all work together. So not only are we making art, enjoying each other's company, but we always try to get back to the community. Mm -hmm. And one thing about working is every little child that comes up here, we treat as special new artists. That's fun. It's going to become an artist someday. Yeah, I have, I have cool. crayons that say future artist, for free for future artist. Yeah. And, <laughs> and they and, grab the packets. And I have drawings that I give to the kids yeah, just so that, you know. You do. You yeah. have a lot. You know, just because I want them to keep working in the arts because it's a great career. It's a great way to live. I've actually, um, kids have come in with that. The parents are saying that they are artists, and my thought is, you don't have to wait till you're 18. Right. Bring me something. We'll right. frame it. And we actually did that. We did that for um, a couple months ago um, for Lambertville for the flooding. Mm -hmm. A little girl, uh, eight years old, made um, a piece on canvas. Mm -hmm. I went and framed it. Mm -hmm. She sold it for 40 bucks. I gave her 20, so she understood the whole idea of. You know, right. like burning, like making money. Right. And um, and then we gave 20 dollars to Lambertville Strong. Uh, it's nice. So, so it's perfect. It's nice. It is good. Hello, my name is Kathy Begg. I'm an artist here at uh, 43 Canal Studio, and we're going to show you a little bit of my work. I believe art starts young, and you can develop your artwork. And uh, this was one of the things I did for a contest, which I won um, on uh, celebrating us, which was commissioned by Smithville Inn, which is down in Atlantic City County, in Atlantic County, by Atlantic City. And it was a competition for all the high schools, and uh, so I won that. This is the pen and ink that I did with a 12-tip pen, which is a very fine point pen. And uh, you had to be very careful because you had dipped it in an ink well, and you couldn't, you, you, had to, you had to be careful so you didn't splatter, and the, the pen point had to glide across the paper, it couldn't just stick on it or you'd get this big blob. And the one thing about working with pen and ink is that if you make a mistake, that's it. Throw it away, start over. You can't, you don't have anything to correct with. Now over time, I had to develop another form of artwork, of which I did, which is also pen and ink with watercolor, but because I've had some health issues over time, my artwork changes based on what my body can do. And I did my pen and ink for a long time. Then I had a health issue in 2005, and I didn't draw again in 2014. And the reason I couldn't draw is because I couldn't hold a quill tip pen anymore. But I found, someone found for me a marker that has the same quality of line, but it's fatter so that I could hold it. And these are some of my pen and inks and watercolors that I did since uh, 2014, but currently I can't draw again because I had another neurological event and um, I can't hold it, uh, even that pen. So uh, these are some of my drawings and I will get back to it, but I have to wait till my hands catch up. Like now, my health dictates my art and um, one of the things that I did to try to bring my hands back was I started a, a, a making paintings and out of sawdust. Uh, I make a clay and it was, and I still, still doing this, now I'm gonna do some more of it, but I make clay and then that clay, I manipulate the clay and I mold the clay and it takes 48 hours to dry and then I paint it. I developed this so that I could bring my hands back and also because I got tired in occupational therapy just putting clothespins on baskets. So um, that's what I did. Um, 
uh, to bring my hands back. Now, the one thing about having a neurological event is your brain changes a little bit. And I started to work with wood, uh, carving, first carving small pieces, and then working to larger pieces. Um, these are some of the small carvings that I did. And then from there, I moved on to uh, building out and creating these little lamps. And I have another one over, over in the corner here that has different types of wood. Uh, it has, uh, well, cedar and, and, and um, mahogany and some black walnut in it. Um, but each one of those are hand done. I don't use large tools. And uh, this is one of my um, sculptures that has been in many shows. Uh, and, and it was also up in a show up in New York City. Um, so this is called Lady Luck. And I've been very fortunate in my life to be able to do my art and to share it with a lot of people. Uh, I currently had another neurological event and I haven't been able to work in drawing or with my wood because I couldn't hold the woodworking tools. So an artist always has to create and I always have to create. So I had to find something I could do. So I started with carving with my, uh, my grinder, aluminum, because aluminum is extremely soft. And uh, it, I could hold the grinder for five or 10 minutes at a time to start to grind. And um, these are just two of them that I have left. I sold the rest of them, but anyway, I started grinding and then after grinding, uh, I could hold a paintbrush so I started to paint, um, which I used to do all the time. So then I moved over to copper. Now, with working with the copper, I was able to not only carve and paint on it like I did with the aluminum, but then I started playing. And, and art is meant to be joyful. It's meant to, it, it's meant to get you motivated. It's meant for experimentation. And as when you experiment, sometimes you come up with new things. And I decided I wanted to see the patina of the copper. And all of this copper was bright and shiny right here. This is the first one I did. And the one thing that you can see is I still wanted to draw. So I was able to take one of my drill points that was like an inch and a half wide so I could hold it. And I, I drew into the copper. And then I said, eh. So then I started playing around with natural acids and started to etch into um, the copper. And that's how I came up with these. Now the thing is, is the copper will continue. I don't put anything on top of the, the paintings I put something on top of because I kind of want those colors to stay the way they are. So I, I kind of stopped the oxidation by putting something on top so it kind of stays just where it is. Now on these, I don't. And over time, each one of these colors that came out with the different oxidations is all going to uh, create its own little patina. But hopefully, and, I, and I've watched it happen, the patinas will keep, keep the same value tone. They'll gradually work its way down. And so the patinas will always the, will work in that same fashion. One won't over, overpower the other. Because I worked, like I mentioned earlier, that I worked up in the New Hope Arts work on wood, I've always tried to create something for that. And this table here, I did uh, and was in the work on wood show. And a priest just happened to be up visiting a friend and they came to work in wood and he liked it and said, would you consider doing a lectern for me? And I said, wow, yeah. So um, I did a lot of different drawings for him. And he, we, he had to go back to Mississippi so we were sending back and forth to each other. Uh, and then finally he picked out what he wanted and I was able to design the lectern and then he said, okay, besides the lectern, let's do an altar. So I said, okay. So we went to the local wood place that I go to. And John, who is a wonderful, I call him an artisan, even though he probably doesn't, because he helps you pick out the right wood. Uh, and he's such a wonderful man, he delivered all the wood to my home. 
which is hard because these are tree trunks. And I carved into the tree trunks to create the natural, you wanted the tree, the doll to look like it grew right out of the ground. So, so that's uh, what we achieved. And I think he was very happy with them. But this project I'm really proud of. It's in New Hope. It's down off of Main Street. It is a uh, railing to go to the apartment. And the story behind this was the granddaughter's grandfather was a merchant marine. And he would always tell her stories about the seven mermaids. And so, so she wanted a railing that, ex that showed the seven mermaids. So we had to do two, two railings. They were just these big planks of wood. And I drew the drawing, she approved them. And I carved them and we made this wonderful walkway that's a tribute to her grandfather and functional because it works for the tenants that live at that, that place. So uh, that's just some of my work. I'm Donna Lillo, owner, artist of Lillo Stained Glass Studio, located in the New Hope Arts Building on Bridge Street. I've been doing this for a living since I was 15 years old. I started at a studio when I was 15, apprenticing. My parents actually had to sign working papers to allow me to work at the studio. I stayed with them all the way through college. I have a commercial art degree, and by the time I got out of college is when I started wandering into New Hope and figuring that I wanted to be in New Hope and live in New Hope and be an artist in New Hope. So I moved to New Hope and after college got a, a job in another studio in New Hope. I worked in two different studios and then I'd say by the time I was like, I think it was, I was like 25 years old, I, I knew that I knew more than the boss that I was working for at the time, so I decided it was time to get out on my own. So in 1985 is when I started Lillo Stained Glass Studio, and I've been in maybe three or three locations in New Hope, on Main Street, on Bridge Street. But when I came to the New Hope Art Center, it's this is where I really love being because of what we talked about before, about us all working together and being together in the studios, sharing each other's work, doing everything together. So my business has, I'd say about three different aspects to it. I have the retail end of the business, which is basically everything that you see hanging in the studio. It's open to the public. Then I have commission work where this is for a couple that just got married and I'm doing their initials with a rose running through it so that and uh, they pick their colors and everything and that's their artwork. The drawings that you see on the wall have all been this drawing right here when in somebody's house and if we turn around you can see the finished product. She actually brought it back to me last week because she broke a piece in it so I'm going to fix it for her. Her name is Vita. I have other drawings back on the sidewall back there that are all going in people's homes. These are transoms. These drawings will turn the other way. These are all going in people's homes. Commission pieces. The heron is something I'm going to be doing for a show that I'm going to be going into. My jewelry boxes is part of my wholesale business. My wholesale business, I sell to over 85 galleries across the country. They're all American handcrafted galleries. Some of the best artists are in these galleries. So that's, that's a nice thing to be able to tell people that I'm in that many galleries. And, and this is my work table where I do all my cutting of my glass. I do a lot of my drawings here. After I cut the glass, back there is my soldering station where I do all my soldering. People worry about ventilation. I have a big HEPA ventilation system. I wear a respirator during the week because the lead fumes can be dangerous. It's nice when people come into the shop when I'm standing here working. They love to come in and watch me working and cutting glass. If children are big enough, I'll let them come around the table and actually let them cut glass. The smaller kids, 
I end up giving them like jewels or something if they're good in the studio. But it's good to tell the kids that, you know, I've been in art since I was probably six or seven in art classes. And the, the best part of the story is that I went to Catholic school. My parents were devout Catholics. And when it got to be my freshman year, I wanted to be an art major. Well, for some reason, the nun wouldn't let me become an art major. My mother, being a devout Catholic, took me out of Catholic school and put me in public school. That's how much they supported me being an artist. So, my mom used to say until the day she died, I wish that you could go back and tell that nun what you did with your life and how successful you've been with your business. So I have to credit my parents for, because my mom found me the job when I was 15. She took me out of school to keep me being an artist. They set up a studio in their house for me so that I could do my work. So, and all of these lamps, these two lamps hung in my parents' house until the day that they died. I mean, this one is actually signed, made with love for mom and dad, 1985. And that's my story. And I love it. Donna Leo is probably one of the most gifted stained glass workers I have met. Uh, she is innovative, creative. She probably doesn't give herself enough credit for what she does. She tends to minimize the impact her stained glass has had um, on a lot of people and her creativity and her designs that have nothing to do with selling is really, really, really fantastic. And she probably didn't tell anybody that she won an award for one of her stained glasses. But it's this stained glass is kind of large. It was in the New Hope, Naked and New Hope show and it's of a woman laying by a pool fabulous piece, but she would never tell anybody that she won an award for that. Hey everyone, welcome to Scramble Gallery of Gifts. I am Erin Simmons, the one of the artists and the owner of Scramble. So um, I grew up in an arts and crafts sort of family. My mom was a stained glass artist. And as a kid, I wished she was a toy maker. And as a teenager, I wished that she made jewelry. Um, and then when I was a college student, I realized I could use all of her scraps to make my own stuff, sell my own stuff, and then buy whatever I want. So during college, so I didn't have to get a real job, I would go and grab all of her scraps and make mirrors and frames and things like that. And she would let me um, go to wholesale shows with her. And at one point, I actually had 16 stores that I sold my stuff to. So I never had to get like a, like I said, real job in college. So I got the bug though when I was about three years old. Um, my mom had a little boutique in her home, during, or in our home during the holidays, and she let me draw stick figures. I was charging 25 cents for the stick figures. A lady gave me a dollar, told me to keep the change, and that just, that's what made <laughs> this dream really start. So. So I, went, I did the stained glass for probably about like, I'd say on and off about like eight years. And then I was kind of tired of being in the studio all the time. I wanted to be out and about. So I discovered something called alcohol inks. Alcohol ink is actually very vibrant. So I started off with making these mosaics. So these are eggshells. Um, so I lay the eggshell down on a clay piece that I make and then I color them and then I put resin on them so I started off doing craft fairs you know and uh, selling my scrambled eggshell pendants I was gonna call it eggstastic and you know using the egg word but my uncle um, he actually said one day he was scrambled and that was the beginning of scrambled this space is part kind of crafts and part art so it's scrambled, it's kind of like whatever it wants to be. I don't have to say it's a gallery or a fine art gallery, I don't have to say it's a craft store. So it's scrambled. Whatever kind of is in here, that's what makes it what it is. Um, also, I am scrambled. So it's, also, it's like automatically 
um, an excuse for the way I act. <laughs> People go like, I think I know why it's scrambled. They think it's me, but it's really was the eggshells. So, my uncle, sadly, right like uh, about six months before I opened this, um, he passed away. He was 60 years old and uh, he left, um, he didn't have any kids, uh, so he had his nieces and his nephews and he left us all a little chunk of money to follow our dreams. So my dream has been scrambled. There are 25 artists in this store. Um, I am one of them. So at any one time, there'll be more of my stuff. It used to be about 70% of my things, and I only had eight artists when I started. But this is my art. So what I do is, I'm not like, I don't draw things that are deep and uh, you know have a lot of like stories behind them. I like to draw pretty things. Um, so what I do is I make my art without paintbrushes. So that's kind of my thing. Um, I use my fingers, um, little tiny dental micro brushes, uh, Q-tips, felt, credit cards. The actual, the, the mountains in my pictures are made with credit cards. So alcohol ink is a very liquid, um, just it's basically like water, it's like rubbing alcohol. Um, and I move the uh, credit card to kind of give me those mountains. This flower here, this is actually compressed air. Um, so I lay the ink down and then I use compressed air to make the petals. This as well, people tend to like this technique because it looks a little batikish, but it's really just the way alcohol inks interact with each other. So it, I feel sometimes like I'm cheating, but <laughs> I get those, I learn how to manipulate the art to get what I want. And then one of my best sellers is actually these switch plates. So this is like the 10th batch of these. Um, and again, I use the same sort of technique, no fingers, I mean, no, no paintbrushes. Um, I use anything but a paintbrush. So, and I'll use like little like micro pens and things to accent like little fine details. But this is something where I'm using Victorian beads as, or Victorian, yeah, Victorian buttons as stamps for the clay. And then I would kind of rough them up to have like a little, I think, Mexican quality to it. Uh, so I started off with eight artists. My cousin, she wanted to be a Disney artist. Um, she ended up being a teacher, but I get to feature her stuff here, so it makes me so proud to be able to share my um, my cousin's things. My mom, like I said, was a stained glass artist. She kind of retired from that, and this is she's upcycling now. So this is actually made with paint mixing sticks. So the um, the five gallon mixing sticks, she cut them, set them up, stained them and then put them together with this upcycled table that she had found. Um, my dad is actually um, an oil artist. So he started painting, or yeah, he started painting when he was 38. Correction officer that wanted to know, like what, it, had no idea what he was gonna do when he retired. So he, I remember him literally shadowing like spheres when I was a kid, um, you know, to learn how to shadow and, and going to Hudson uh, Valley like schools for art. And so now he is an oil artist, so that's how he's spending his retirement. My brother, <laughs> who's actually also a plumber, he had to get in on the whole thing too, you know. So he makes um, copper fixtures. So plumber by day, and then when he has to get away from the, the whole crew, the whole family, he goes into the garage and he makes some things for my store. Um, my little niece, who's seven, she's going to be selling morning glory seeds here that she's been picking off the morning glories. So everybody's, all the family is like in this space. I try to make this place comfortable. I try this to make this place welcoming. And a lot of people come in because they love the vibe of the store. And they feel, um, and they tell me that they feel that they are comfortable with asking me about how I get artists in here. So I basically say, Show me your stuff, and if I like it, and if I can fit it in here, then then it will be here. But some kind of fun features that I also try to incorporate in Scramble so that we can be a part of the community is we have a not-for-profit of the month, and so people can give their spare change or whatever, and do that. Thank you for spending time in Scramble. Erin is one big ball of energy. She just kind of bounces down the boardwalk. Um, she's very engaging, but I think no one would know how serious she takes her own artwork. She would never tell anybody as much about her artwork. 
and she needs to show more of her hard work. Um, so Donna comes off like she is um, a gang member. <laughs> she comes off kind of tough, like you expect, like you know, you're gonna have to, um, you know, uh, earn your earn your way in. But she's really she's really a softie, and she's been a great support of my art too. And, um, and we work together really good because I have that little stained glass background so um, I'm really touched when she comes to me for like ideas or advice as far as how things, um, how colors and, and uh, costs of things, how to price things. So I'm really touched when she's been doing this for 50 years. I did it for like a period of like 10 years and she still, and she comes to me to just kind of talk about her, her stuff and, 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 and takes my advice. And I love it. That's what I say about her. She's always late. <laughs> if you want her to show up on time, tell her 15 minutes earlier. <laughs> then she gets mad at you if she shows up on time, because that's what happened. She showed up on time last week. And she got mad at me. She said, you told me it was 5 o'clock. And I said, well, because you're always late. <laughs>